Welcome back guys, welcome back to another sunny British day. Today we're going to talk about all these horrible e-bike fires that have been happening. Look at this lovely location guys, absolutely amazing. Apologise now for swatting flies and stuff as I'm talking because there's loads of them around. Um, I'm just like a cow, they're all attracting to me. So yeah, e-bike batteries, they don't just catch fire. This is the truth of the matter. I've seen lots of news articles published, you know, scaremongering a bit. There's a, there's some fact in, in there, obviously, as well, but, you know, they're scaremongering a little bit, trying to, you know, get on the whole e-bike thing. E-bikes are bad and batteries are bad, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, there's been a lot of news articles publishing us informing that there's been an outbreak in e-scooter and e-bike fires in the UK. This is no joke, and my heart goes out to those who've been injured and even died in the worst cases. It's a terrible situation. So I think it's time for a bit of education on this matter because obviously the press is kind of saying stuff and again, it's not entirely correct, blaming things that aren't really the cause of the problem. So let's be really clear on this. It's really unlikely that an e-bike or e-scooter will just spontaneously combust. It doesn't happen. The most likely part of an electric vehicle that has the potential to go up in flames is the fuel tank. Yes, they have a fuel tank. The modern equivalent of a fuel tank is a battery. So, and that's the first point, we all need to be treating batteries as a fuel source because that's what they are, a solid fuel source. E-bike batteries hold a huge amount of energy to propel you and assist you down the, and move down the road. And if used correctly, can be much safer than liquid fuel, but not completely safe. Remember, it's still a fuel source. It's most likely true that the horrible incidents we've seen in these cases happen during charging these batteries. The chemistry that is used in modern energy dense batteries for e-bikes and e-scooters is usually lithium iron or lithium iron polymer. It's normally most cases lithium iron. And this battery technology, whilst inherently very stable, can be really dangerous if overcharged. By overcharged, I mean the top voltage or fully charged voltage of a battery cell is pushed way higher than it's designed for. This results in excessive heat and pressure build up and the cell begins to vent. Now, depending on the severity of the situation, this could result in a flame or maybe just a release of gas. In the case of a flame, it's potentially disastrous because these cells become very unstable at high temperatures and a thermal runaway can occur. The results, this results in a catastrophic explosion, not just of one cell, but a tag team effect as each cell in the pack is linked and they'll just explode in sequence. A bit like one of those kind of party display firework boxes that you light the end and it goes da 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 You know, exactly that sort of thing. And you don't want that in your living room or your house or anywhere near it. So really we should not be charging batteries inside our houses, just to avoid the very worst case scenario. You know, now I know this isn't gonna be convenient for a lot of people because, you know, people aren't able to sort of charge outside or put it in a shed or something like that you know not everybody can do that but the point is you just really don't want to be charging unattended and um, we'll come to like the summary later but that's one of the points now i'm going to be really clear i'm not saying this because something bad is going to happen because it's a very small chance it's actually it actually will however there's still a chance and that's what we're going to talk about next so how does the most likely cause of a fire happen it's the gross overcharge scenario it's, it's difficult to say exactly, but my educated guest, having been working with this type of battery for around 20 years now, <laughs> he, he was close, wasn't he? Um, it could be due to the failure of the onboard battery management system built into the battery. There's a small circuit, if you don't know, there's a small circuit inside a battery um, designed to disconnect the charger in the case of overcharge and over discharge if you're riding and other unwanted states. So it's, it kind of looks after the battery and its safety. Think of it like an intelligent fuse, It is, you know, a good way of thinking of it. Now, these little circuits are usually reliable and they just sit there doing their stuff and keep your battery in check. There's lots of these cells in these batteries as we discussed earlier, with the sequence of explosions, all that sort of stuff. Um, and they're all connected together to make up, make up the full power needed to move an e-bike or e-scooter. And it's important that they're balanced so they can charge and discharge equally. So they're all all the cells in the pack have got to be charged up to the same level and discharged at the same level. Sometimes they won't because of the, the internal resistance and chemistry, the way it, it's, um, diff it's anomalies across the pack. But the BMS is the thing that kind of watches over that and makes sure that, you know, it, it is all working as it should be. Now, if this board ever fails, then you usually find the battery won't work at all. In extreme cases, it's possible that it will no longer balance the cells and one bank might get overcharged. So this could be a reason. 
but to be honest, I've never seen that happen in, in my 20 years of experience. I've never seen that happen. Um, most times, if a BMS fails, it will just completely stop working. The whole battery will become dead, and you'll be like, oh, why has my battery stopped working? So there's not really any way around it other than taking it apart and diagnosing problems. Other scenarios could be water ingress leading to failure of a BMS. Again, it's difficult to say you know, how that would affect it. It could affect it in a hundred different ways. But the point is a lot of e-bike batteries are not waterproof. They're generally capable of withstanding a spray of water, but not continuously. So you should always take measures to shield the battery from excessive amounts of water. Just a simple plastic bag stretched over the battery. If you're caught out in the rain, that can you know, work wonders. Now there's also scenarios where a user can take apart the battery and remove the BMS because it's possible to make an e-bike faster and more powerful by removing the main thing that prevents the battery delivering excessive amounts of power, the BMS. So I'm not saying this has happened in these cases, but it's totally possible that, you know, these have been tampered with. Finally, since a lot of modern e-bikes use mains chargers, like a charger or power adapter that you would use for your phone, and these share common connectors, that usually very similar connectors on, on, on different vehicles, and it's, it's entirely possible that, a, that an incorrect charger could have been used to charge the battery. If you use a charger that's designed for a vehicle with a higher power battery, a high voltage battery, then, and you put it on a lower voltage battery, then you're gonna get a problem. I mean, nine times out of 10, it shouldn't be a problem because if you've got a good working healthy BMS battery management system, it will cut the charge when the battery is fully charged. But not if the BMS is faulty or it's been tampered with or even removed, it's not gonna do it. So, you know, you shouldn't try this. You shouldn't try using, um, you know, higher power chargers on, on different batteries. Just don't experiment with it at all. But the point is, if you've got multiple electric vehicles with the same charger, you should take steps to make sure you're not gonna use the wrong one. Color tape on the charging connectors and labeling the chargers, that sort of thing could help in these cases. Especially if an uneducated family member may one day decide to recharge the bike or scooter, they just, you know, plug it in. So you should be really careful in that. Keep the chargers with the bikes or the things that you want to use them as well. Right, I'm going to jump in here because I did actually forget to mention one of the other reasons, and that is the mechanical failure. You know, these bikes are jumping up and down, they're going up and down on bumpy pavements and all that sort of stuff and getting really, really hammered about. So it's possible that internal wiring could be compromised in that way. Generally, these things are pretty well built. You know, all the wires and everything inside are generally kind of taped together. But, you know, maybe that combined with water ingress, you know, loosens tape and stuff inside that kind of, you know, holds all this stuff together. So you could potentially get like, you know, wires coming off or maybe hitting something else. But, you know, it's unlikely that's going to cause a massive catastrophic failure because wires inside are thin. And if things short out, they will generally just, the wires will melt because they just act like a piece of fuse wire. Um, but you shouldn't rule it out. It could be, it could be something to do with sort of mechanical failure. It could totally add to the problem anyway. So those are the main reasons why a battery is going to explode. Um, and in summary, here's some sort of useful tips about, you know, charging. Charge outside if you can. Don't charge unattended or overnight. Always visually check your battery for signs of water and other ingress or damage. You know, if it's got a massive dent in the side of it, probably not a good idea to charge it um you know use use just use common sense you can tell by looking at a battery if it looks in a bad condition just don't charge it or take extra measures and be extra careful when you're charging it well, whilst you are charging fill the casing of the battery make sure you know it's not getting hot or there's any ex excessive heat whilst charging um ir cameras are getting popular now like flur cameras and stuff like that so you know, if you want to be super over the top, you could you could look at the battery with one of those and see if there's any heat spots developing on a battery whilst it's charging. You know, they will heat up a bit on charge anyway, but, um, you know, excessive heat is, is not good. Um, and also just make sure you don't use the wrong charger. Just re be really careful. Can't stress that enough. So as usual, I've seen the pressure's jumped on this and jumped to a lot of wild conclusions, blaming it on imported gear, all this sort of stuff. Um, not strictly true. You know, most of the stuff is made in China. This this is a, this is a fact. Even the high end, you know, really expensive e-bikes that you know are UK brands or US brands, the batteries will be made in China. These guys have been making batteries long before we adopted all this technology. Um, so you know, they know what they're doing, and the quality generally of, of batteries is is pretty good. It's mostly things failing because of outside sources. You know, this you won't have a battery just sit there and it'll just explode. It has to be provoked in some way. You know, provoked, I don't mean like someone's doing something on purpose. I just mean you're doing something with that battery. You're either charging it or you're discharging it or doing something you shouldn't be um, with it. 
anyway, all that aside, it is really to do with miseducation out there. People don't really understand what they're dealing with here. And that's hopefully what this video will start to help, you know, people kind of get to grips with what this technology is and that it needs to be taken seriously. It's not a toy. Um, it should be treated like fuel and that is what I've got to say about it guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Don't forget like, subscribe if you like this sort of content. Um, I'm sure, how could you not? How could you not? <laughs> so I'll catch you next time.